The History of Penang Land Law In 1807, the English law in Penang was introduced by the Charter of Justice 1807 with the argument that Penang was a virgin territory with no proper legal and administrative system when occupied by the East India Company. In 1837, after the deed system was introduced, there were few other land law introduced in Penang, which were verbal license granted by Francis Light, cutting paper and measurement paper. In 1839, the Indian Act was passed and known as the Straits Land Act. Finally, in January 1966, the deed system ceased to have effect in Penang. The principle of land law in Penang was all land should be vested in the crown as the English property or better known as the deed system. The deed system was introduced in Penang as there were no formal regulation regulating land tenure in Penang. The ownership of land is not by deeds or by conveyance but based purely on document executed between the parties. It is a system where documents recorded in the land registry are evidence of the title. The case law of Ong Cheng Niu against Yip Chen Niao, 1872. A resident from the island of Penang died, leaving behind him a will. An issue arose on whether customary law or English law should be applied to verify the validity of the will. The Privy Council held that statutes relating to matters and exigency peculiar to the local condition of England and which are not adapted to the circumstances of the colony. do not become part of its law, although the England law was introduced. In other words, even though English law was conceded as the law of Penang, customary law was also being applied by the Malay, Chinese and Indian. Malacca was finally ceded to the British by the Dutch in 1824. At this time, Malacca had its own land tenure system consisting of Islamic law and the Malay custom. The land law that prevailed the Malay customary tenure was the system of Dutch grants implemented in the urban areas. In 1830, Malacca land regulation was promulgated with the provision of the East India Company. In 1837, the local land regulation was repealed with a view to the introduction of a general land law. In 1839, the Indian Act was introduced with provided recognition for prescriptive rights in land. These rights corresponded to the adult concept of ownership by occupation and cultivation. Subsequently, the Malacca Land Customary Rights Ordinance 1886 was introduced, providing customary tenure based on occupation and cultivation. The 1886 ordinance remained in force until the National Land Code Act 1963 took effect. In Malacca, the principle of land law is that all land belong to the ruler or the sultan. At that time, the practice was one who fells the trees owes the land. This proprietary right is created by clearing the land, followed by continuous occupation. The occupier has an interest in that land, and he was entitled to charge or assign that land. The natives in Malacca have retained their customary tenure during the Portuguese, Dutch, and British occupation. Some example of Malay customary land tenure are the proprietary rights, which consist of tanah mati and tanah hidup. Tana mati or dead land are land which has been abandoned after being cleared and bears no trace of appropriation. Tana hidup is when a person clears the land by cultivating or by building a house, he acquired a proprietary right in that land. The three types of tana hidup are tana kampo, land with fruit trees, tana bendang, wet rice land, and tana huma, hill land for shifting cultivation. Secondly is the jual janji a conditional sale is where land is held as security for a loan the sale of the land with the condition that the buyer shall retransfer the land to the borrower upon the latter paying back an identical price before a stipulated date if the buyer fails to do so the sale agreement becomes absolute or jual putus lastly is the pulang belanja under the malay customary land one does not own the land but merely have the benefits or interest in it For instance, if the owner wishes to sell his land, the price which he could expect from the purchaser would be the sum total of his labor and expenses incurred in cultivating the land. And now, we are moving on to the case law of Malacca. So Peter Benson Maxwell CJ held that the Malacca land refers to the same customary tenure and declares that all cultivators and residents are subject to the payment of one tenth. 
The Portuguese left the Malay custom and when the settlement was ceded to the crown appears to be beyond dispute and that the session left the law unaltered is equally plain on general principles. In short, the land law then prevailing was the Malay customary tenure with the system of Dutch grants implemented in the urban areas. Singapore land law in Singapore is based on English land law. It was received here together with other English law and doctrines by virtue of the Second Charter of Justice 1826. This provided for the English doctrines of tenure and estates and other real property concepts to apply in Singapore. These are the history of law established during the Federated Malayan States and Unfederated Malayan States. Federated state consists of Perak, Selangor, Pahang, and Negeri Sembilan. The land enactment was introduced in the states of Johor, Kedah, Kelantan, Perlis, Terengganu as early as from year 1912. Land tenure was also the Malay customary tenure influenced in some instances by Thai law, specifically Kedah and Perlis. Late the 19th century, the Torian system was introduced. In contrast with the Federated Malay States, the Unfettered Malay States were more autonomous with their rulers enjoying some political discretion and they were not administered collectively. Each had a British advisor in its administration. Apart from Johor, which was more developed, these states were heavily rural and predominantly Malay in population composition, with employment being overwhelmingly concentrated in traditional agriculture and fishing. In late 19th and 20th century, the torrent system was introduced. The land enactment was introduced in the states of Johor, Kedah, Kelantan, Perlis, and Terengganu as early as from year of 1912. And now we are moving on to the Federated Malay State Principle and Case Law. Principal use is the torrent system which was first introduced into the Federated Malay States and there was already a system of land law based on Malay custom and Islamic law. In the case of Tengku Jafar and another, and the state of Pahang 1987, the land law in Pahang before the introduction of the torrent system was the Islamic law of the Shafi'i school. The torrent system was introduced through the general land regulations, Perak Selangor Negeri Sembilan and Pahang land enactments 1997, and registration of titles regulation enactments. And here we provided the case law of Federated Malay States, Shaikh Abdul Latif and others, and Shaikh Ilyas Box 1915. British influence, formally recognized by their rulers, the only law which existed and accepted by the Malays as applicable to questions of inheritance. When British administrators come to the FMS, Malay customary tenants soon gave way to the Torian system and the first Torian legislation in the Malay state was the Selangor Registration of Titles Regulations of 1981. In late 19th and 20th century, the Torian system was introduced. The land enactment was introduced in the states of Johor, Kedah, Kelantan, Perlis and Terengganu as early as from year of 1912. So, what is Torian system? Before the torrent systems, all land belonged to the sovereign and others were allowed to use the land as long as 10% of the profit made off of it went back to the sovereign. Some interesting facts of, of Malaysia's land laws before the torrent system show how they were influenced by the popular religion of Islam. For instance, land that was obtained during marriage by a husband while a wife was working only as a housewife would be given to the wife in the event of the husband's death or divorce. The National Land Code 1965 was made effective from 1 January 1966, whereby henceforth a uniform system of land tenure and dealing existed throughout Peninsula Malaysia. Penang and Malacca was also absorbed into the system by the promulgation of the Penang and Malacca Titles Act 1963. In a gist, the system practice is commonly referred to as the Torrent System or the Registration of Title System. It owed its original name after Sir Robert Torrance, who earlier had introduced it into South Australia, which thereafter spread throughout 
Australia and eventually reaching our shores. The current system is basically a system of registration of titles and dealings on the land in order to have a system that is reliable, simple, cheap, speedy and suited to the needs of the community. The torrent system is a mode of conveyancing whereby the title to the land and interest in the land depends upon registration and not upon instrument inter-parties. The register is given utmost importance. In Tehbi vs Marmutu case, it was said that under the torrent system, the register is everything and it would be wrong to allow an investigation as a right of the person to appear upon the register when he holds the certificate of title. Torrent system confers indefeasible title upon registration. However, indefeasibility can be defeated where the transferee himself is guilty of fraud or forgery or misrepresentation or mistake or void instrument or the title was unlawfully acquired. Other than that, any dealing in respect of an alienated land or interest in land must be registered with the relevant land registry in order to confer a title or interest on a new proprietor or interest holder. So let's talk about one of the cases that happens during the era or during the torrent system era. So one of them is Dove Development Co. versus Kelantan Government. This case is about a foreign state entered into an agreement with a trading company by which the company was granted rights of mining, cutting timber, and road making in the state. A clause in the agreement provided that any disputes arising under the agreement should be referred to arbitration and that a clause should be deemed to be a submission with the Arbitration Act. Disputes having arisen resort was had to arbitration and an award was made. A motion by the foreign state to set aside the award on the ground of mistake of law was dismissed. But when the company applied under Section 12 of the Arbitration Act 1899 for relief to enforce the award in the same manner as judgment or order to the same effect, the foreign state resisted the application on the ground of its immunity as a sovereign state from legal process. Created using Powtoon. As it was held by Lord Carson, there was nothing in an agreement by a foreign state for the settlement of disputes by arbitration to import a waiver by that state of its right as a sovereign power to refuse to submit to the jurisdiction of English courts on an application for leave to enforce the award by the other party to the agreement. So, and then, as held by Viscount Finlay, he stated that it is obvious that for sovereignty, uh, there must be a certain amount of independence and he also stated that it is quite consistent with sovereignty that the sovereign may in certain respects be dependent on another power. And lastly, as held by Lord Sumner, it is the prerogative of the crown to recognize or to withhold recognition from states or chiefs of state and to determine where from some interesting facts of, of Malaysia's land laws before the torrent system show how they were influenced by the popular religion of Islam. The National the Land Code 1905 was made to be a from the entire nation system, system whereby henceforth it purpose to bring certainty to land. Leading this transaction, and in PJTV, Denson, Sharon and others versus Roxy, Raja Adnan Shah reiterated that the concept of indisability of title is so deeply embedded in our land law that it seems almost right to restrict it. Therefore, the Registration of the transfer of the state land under the LLC defeats all prior registered interests in that land unless the party who acquires the registered title has been guilty of fraud. 